Justin, pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks, for, uh, Fareed. It's a real pleasure to be with you. I was in Ukraine a couple of weeks ago and talked to a number of people there, including your counterpart. Um, one of the things that they do say is that they would dearly wish for more American weaponry, but particularly longer-range uh, weapons. Uh, the Biden administration has been hesitant to do that because of the fear of uh, these weapons essentially reaching into Russia, seeming to be an attack on Russia. Now, my question to you is, Russia has just changed the game. They have annexed all this, all, the entire Donbass, all those four regions. So, in effect, any missile that hits Russian positions in the Donbass is already an attack on Russia. In this new circumstance, why not lean forward, give the Ukrainians the longer-range uh, weaponry they, they were asking for? You're, by Russian law, you're hitting Russia anyway when, you, when these missiles are hitting the Donbass. Well, two, two things here, Fareed. Uh, as you've heard us say, uh, this referendum is a sham. It's fiction. And, and, and we will never respect uh, their illegal annexation of Ukraine territory. Uh, and nor will uh, the, most of the, uh, the international community. Uh, so that's one thing. Now, the second thing is, you know, I talked to my counterpart, uh, the Minister of Defense there in, uh, in Ukraine, Minister Reznikov, routinely. As a matter of fact, I just talked to him last night. Uh, we talk about what's, what's, uh, what's, how the fight's going, what's, what's needed, uh, and, and what's upcoming. Uh, and, and we've been very effective in providing them those things uh, that, uh, that are, are very, very effective on a battlefield, and they have used them uh, in the right way. So they have a capability with the HIMARS and the, the Gimlers, which is around that the HIMARS uh, uh, employs, they, they can range uh, targets in, uh, in almost every piece of, uh, of Ukraine territory. Now, part of the, uh, the annexation, the, the Rus you know, Russia's annexation, um, is uh, the statement by President Putin uh, that he has now made twice, that these territories are now Russian and that he will defend these Russian territories with every means possible. And Russian media has repeatedly uh, interpreted that to mean, very specifically, nuclear weapons, as has Dmitry Medvedev. So this seems to raise the stakes enormously. Um, what do you make of the fact that Vladimir Putin is essentially saying at this point that if, there, if, if he feels there is an attack from uh, NATO, I suppose, on Russian territory, which now includes all of the Donbass, he reserves the right to use nuclear weapons in response. Again, it's an illegal uh, claim. It's an irresponsible uh, statement. Uh, these are, you know, this nuclear sable rattling is not the kind of thing that uh, that we would expect to hear from uh, leaders of, uh, of large countries with, uh, with capability. Uh, and so what, what, what we can expect to see, we can expect that the Ukrainians will continue uh, to move forward and attempt to take back all of the, the, uh, uh, the territory uh, within, their, within their sovereign borders here. And so I don't think that's going to stop, and we will continue to support them in their efforts. What have, have you conveyed to the Russians privately uh, just how dangerous uh, these threats are or what kind of retaliation they might expect from the West? Were there to be a use, say, of tactical nuclear weapons? Well, you've heard uh, 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 people in our, in our leadership, uh, among our leadership, that have said that we, we have uh, communicated to them recently. Personally, I've not talked to Shoigu uh, in, in recent days, but I have talked to him in the past, and I have addressed this very issue uh, to, and warned to, uh, to not go down his path uh, and, and, and conduct uh, this type of irresponsible uh, uh, behavior. So, yes, I have done that in the past personally, but I've not talked to him recently. Did you get the sense he, he got it? He under, you, know, you, were, you felt like he heard your message? I do think he heard my message, uh, but, you know, to be clear, the guy who makes that decision, I mean, it's one man. There, there are no, no checks on, uh, on Mr. Putin. Just as he made the irresponsible decision to, uh, to invade Ukraine, 
uh, you know, he could make another decision. Uh, but I don't see anything right now that, that would lead me to believe that he has made such a decision. So. Mr. Secretary, what is your analysis of how well Ukraine has done? We've all seen and been stunned by this ca recapture of territory, uh, the Russians fleeing. But what I want to ask you is a question that everyone has is, that, you know, uh, they've been able to do a lot. Uh, they'll probably be able to push forward some more. Uh, but is it likely that in the next few months the Ukrainians will be able to really route the Russian position uh, in, the, in the Donbass? Or are we likely to get to some kind of stalemate where Ukraine takes back some territory, but Russia defends a lot of it, and they're, they're kind of stuck in a stalemate? It's hard to predict uh, what exactly is going to happen. I think the Ukrainians have amazed the world in terms of their ability uh, to, uh, to fight back, their ability uh, to exercise uh, initiative, uh, their commitment to the defense of, of their democracy, uh, and that willingness to fight has uh, rallied the international community uh, in, in, in an effort to help uh, provide them the security assistance so that they can continue to fight. Uh, they, they did a magnificent job early on. Uh, they won the Battle of Kyiv. Uh, we saw a bit of a, 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 a slowdown, a stalemate, as a battle transitioned to the, to the Donbass, and it was defined by uh, long-range fires. But then, you know, as the, as the Ukrainians uh, began to receive uh, the high, a technology like HIMARS uh, and employed that technology uh, the right way and began to conduct uh, attacks on things like uh, logistical stores and, and command and control, uh, that's taking away, taking away significant capability uh, from, the, from the Russians. That's also changed the dynamics and it's created an opportunity uh, for the Ukrainians to maneuver. So uh, what we're seeing now is uh, kind of a change in the, in the battlefield dynamics. They, they've done very, very well in the Kharkiv area and, and moved to, uh, to take advantage of uh, opportunities. Uh, the, the fight in the, in the Kyrgyzstan region is going a bit slower, but they're making progress. So uh, they're, they're getting the right things and they're employing them the right way. So it's not just about the equipment that you, that you have, Fareed. It's about how you employ that equipment how you synchronize uh, things together to create battlefield effects that then can create opportunities. Uh, and uh, they, they've done very, very well. In terms of what will happen going forward, hard to predict. Uh, but I would say that uh, whatever direction that this goes in, we will continue to provide security assistance to the Ukrainians for as long as it takes. We're all very hopeful that uh, they'll continue to make progress at the rate that they have. But, uh, but again, I, I, I fought in enough, uh, in enough wars to, to, and enough battles to, to know that uh, you know, no one can really predict a particular outcome of, uh, of any battle. You just have to focus on doing the right things uh, at, and at the right time. And so we, can, we will continue to support the Ukrainians, as you've heard our president say, for as long as it takes.